Welcome back to Muramasa the Demon's Blade. I completely screwed up starting this recording in uh, the recording phase, so we're just going to see this cutscene for a little bit while I uh, do the intro. Same intro as before. What? Oh, that's what you meant. Mumio gets a new attack in, uh, in uh, New Game Plus. During this tree mode, each tree mode, it will just straight up start and work with the uh, pinwheel bones here. And when you damage Mumio at a certain point in his face, he summons the uh, waterfall again. It's not moving there. Yeah, it's not as threatening, and you can't attack it. That's his new attack. Now here's the ending. <laughs> Now it's hard to notice, but Mumio's stance is actually different. So I mentioned this ending pissed me off. It begins. Also, every in some way, every DLC is tied to the main plot. Right, because all of these happen before, right? They're either the roots of or the result of the de of the main campaign. Oh, okay. Let the anger begin. <laughs> what? So Zhen made the soul transfer technique that Jinkuro used at the beginning of the game. He also forged the Dark Resurrection Sword, which was the dagger you saw him use. So guess what? Arashimaru's dead. Oh. The moment I read that, I was furious. Because I really like Arashimaru, and now he's dead. And the villain won. And now he's doing all this bullshit. And I also thought, wait a minute, this is great because uh, Shuohebi's gonna win anyways. But, for whatever reason, so Zhen could just wave it away. Apparently those ropes are going to reverse the death curse on to Shirohebi. This is some pretty elaborate ropes. Yeah, this ending made me really angry. It's like, it's basically a point of I was prepared for this lol, I still win. And the worst part is that to fucking put salt in the wound, they recycle an animation that they used in this in the main ending where Arashimaru was praying to Shiro Heavy. Except this time he's actually just gonna fucking brainwash her. And with all that, Sojan just goes fucking nuts. Mm. Like, the main plot point of uh, the story was Sojan wanted to disrupt chaos. To do so, he had to kill a specific lord and gain a foothold into running Japan's uh, political system. However, Arashimaru's dad thwarted that plot, so Sojin strung this elaborate revenge ploy to use Arashimaru to kill his own dad and then put his plot back into work. Now that he has Arashimaru's body, he just fucking said, whatever, let's just murder everyone. So not only did he undo the character you played as, he undid his own plot. Yes. Well, I guess he has another 130 years to decide whether he wants to go back to that plan. 
Yeah, so fucking with Arashimaru's body, Sojan just murdered an entire political, like an entire castle of political figures, bodyguards, elite samurai, a, a uh, I always forget what they're called, but basically the head of a district. Gone. Uh. Luckily, Shirohebi's not gonna take the standing down. She looks dead. Baby! <laughs> yep. <laughs> and yeah, she looks dead because the ropes that bind her are actually taking the death energy from Arashimaru's curse and re inflicting it on her. And as mentioned in the first ending, death is literally corruption to a divine figure such as her. So she is quite literally being corrupted by her own curse. Also, remember those two bosses that we fought in the second episode? Yeah. Shiranui now has their power. We're about to create a powerful baby. <laughs> yep. So is this some like lead up to Kisuke's plot or something? No. Well, kind of. But not... Kisuke's not going to be an influential figure, but he's going to be relevant in a way. Which will be explained later. However, um, I'm kind of curious, how familiar are you with general Japanese mythology? Eh, bits and pieces. Oh yeah, I asked you this before, but um, you're gonna hear some very familiar names starting roughly now. And for those of you that were clever enough to do research beforehand and saw the cues in uh, episode two, oh man, they're gonna build up to this. But even then, it still pissed me off because look at how evil Rashimaru looks. <laughs> He looks like a fucking super villain right now. <laughs> he definitely looks like he should be a final boss in Samurai Showdown. Yeah. Also, this is him realizing something. Read his text from here on out. Also, the corruption has fully taken hold. So he doesn't have 130 years to reconsider his plans, he just says, fuck it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, where are you re where are you drawing inspiration from this? I'm curious. Um... A lot of places? Why? Are there any particular ones I should be focusing on? There is one, actually, but, um... New character! It's the baby! Mm-hmm. Also, Shiranui is now the old sage. Yeah, when I saw Orochimaru too, I was fucking losing it, too. Mm. <laughs> but it's, it's not so shallow if it's what I'm thinking you're thinking of. This is actually a huge and elaborate reference that will be made quite clear in a minute. Also, the certain swordsman with a powerful evil banishing sword that traveled the world, this boy is eventually going to meet up and train with Kisuke. So that is how Kisuke is involved in this plot. Also, it says it's been 10 years since they escaped from, uh, from Orochimaru's grasp, but it, this dude sounds like he's 25. He also has a super shitty haircut. 
Also, another prevalent name, Tsunade. I'm trying not to say the N word. N word? Naruto. Oh. Okay, I'll just say it. <laughs> Yeah, there's a reason why you think Naruto, which will be explained later, but it's not Naruto. Like, that's why I said it's not so shallow. Also, remember Dengaro? This is him now. He kind of looks like the, um, the samurai, the samurai boyfriend boss from Omohime's story. Yeah, kind of. You might have some inspiration from there, but yeah, Dengaro is like a side character in, in a Shuma story. And yeah, Sh uh, Dengaro mentioned that he should use a moniker. Have you ever heard of the story... The... It's the Something Adventures of Jiraiya. No. But I have played Warriors Orochi. Jiraiya is actually a really old kabuki story detailing three legendary ninjas. The fantastic Jiraiya, the princess Sudane Hime, and the evil Orochi. This thing is so fucking old and it's also the root inspiration for Naruto. And this entire DLC has been a lead-up to this huge reference to <laughs> the tales of Jiraiya. Jiraiya Goketsu Monogatari. It has a different, like, it has a romanized name that is always, like, fleeting to me. But there's also a little bit more to the story, like, after this sequence, the uh, cutscenes are not done. Remember the boss fight to episode 2? Yeah. Is he no longer a skeleton? Doesn't this look familiar? Oh man! If only Orochimaru knew about this fight. Also, look how ridiculous this all is. So, an interesting thing to note, the original story of Jiraiya is that Orochimaru used to be Jiraiya's student. However, uh, Orochimaru got corrupted by snake magic and became evil, and attacked both Tsunade Hime and uh, Jiraiya. However, this story is a little bit different. Also, look at these sword names. Descent into Misery. Descent into Misery and Threads of Fate are the uh, Arxis Romanized version of the final swords you get in Momohime and Kisuke's story. Oh, okay. And now they're being used here to stop Orochimaru. That's a cool tie out. Yeah, <laughs> it still makes me mad. And much like the other endings, once you beat the second ending, you get a little splash. Oh, that's cool. It's the first fight of uh, Shiranui versus Arashimaru. Yeah, like, the first thing that came to mind with, uh, like, Orochimaru's name was, um, the, the, the snake sword. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, and also Warriors Orochi, because same thing. Yeah. So... Thanks, everybody, for watching A Spirited Seven Nights Haunting, and thank you, Tati, for playing along with this. Yeah, no worries. It was fun. Oh, God, that ending still makes me mad. But, <laughs> wow. I'm so sad because the the sad thing about Orochimaru's ending is that at one point they were saying, exercise Orochimaru and save Orochimaru. However, the problem is with the soul transfer technique, as detailed by... Uh, by Jinkuro, it swaps bodies. So right now, Arashimaru's soul is rotting in the old desiccated body of Sojan. Mm-hmm. So there's no saving Arashimaru, and that's why this ending pisses me off so much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like the first ending more because it just ties everything nice and up in a nice little package. Yeah. That one, it tries to, like, force the second plot down your mouth. <laughs>
Well, somebody said that this was basically a whole fact that somebody at Vanillaware really liked the Tales of Jiraiya, so they went with that. But yeah, I'm just going into a fucking diatribe now. Thank you for watching A Spirited Seven Nights Haunting. Next up is the last DLC, Hell is Where the Heart Is. I'll see you folks then.